hello and good morning to each of you. We're live right now. We're live on Facebook. It's Wednesday, July the 29th of 2020. And we're winding down on this month. Can you believe it? You know, with all that has transpired, it just seems like this whole year, you know, has zipped by. But by God's grace, we are we are here. We've seen this day. You know, God is good. God is good. And so again, welcome aboard to everyone. This is the virtual Bible study. So whether you're catching this live or the replay, I do want to welcome each and every one of you here. Uh, we're live on Spreaker and iHeartRadio as well. Uh, we're live predominantly on Facebook on my timeline as we speak. And so I do want to welcome each and every one of you. Thank you so much for those of you who have been consistent and plugging in. You know, welcome to the virtual Bible study. I'm going to check and make sure that all is well with our audio. Looks like it is. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I know Facebook is letting people know that we are live right now. Okay. So, you know, we definitely, definitely uh, want to rejoice and be glad that we have this opportunity to connect in such a way. You know, that's just, just grateful. Just grateful, guys. And so welcome to the virtual Bible study. This is something that we do Monday through Saturday around 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, really to help you to have a powerful start to your day, um, to really help you to connect with the Most High in a deeper way, you know, strengthening your relationship with the Lord and helping you to win from the inside out. That's really what the goal is with this particular session. And so, you know, you're welcome. You're more than welcome to have a notepad, a pen, your Bible out, or just listen in, have an ear to hear whatever it is that that's going to be shared and taught and expounded on. All right. So being as though this is an audio stream only right now, um, there are a couple of ways that you can participate. So number one, okay, number one, you can like or love the stream, like or love the stream uh, that you're tuning into at this particular time. Uh, you can do that on Facebook and some of the other platforms as well. You know, also you can comment below. You can comment and, and actually place whatever thoughts you have or any questions that you might have inside of the comment section. And then lastly, we do have that share feature. So I, one of the things I do understand is that God wants us to share the good news. And this is one of the easiest ways to do it. So by hitting that share button, we can reach more people and provide this message of hope and inspiration to more people together we can do this together and so i thank each and every one of you who have taken the time you know to to share this thing out and to help impact lives all right so those are a couple of ways to be involved everyone so uh, again what we're going to do right now is do a little bit of an overview uh, but before we do that overview i'm going to go ahead and share this out possibly to two places let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to share it to a page. As soon as it pulls up, it looks like it's coming up now. So let's find the page. There we go. Perfect. So I shared this out to a page, and I'm going to share it out to a group as well. So let me get it out there to a group. All right. There we go. Here we go. Perfect. Got the group. All right. So again, uh, shared mine out. So good morning, Miss Carolyn Stevens. Good morning. I saw your watch party. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for plugging in and being here. Glad to see you in the stream. Okay. Glad to see you a part of the stream. All right, guys. You know, here is the moment. I want to share with you a little overview, just in case we do have um, anyone that's new that tunes into the virtual Bible study. I want to make sure that they understand. Uh, what's going to happen during this time together. So when we do come onto the platform, um, I do go over these basic housekeeping things and uh, provide these little um, guidance direct and directive points. Okay. After we do that, we do have a moment of prayer that's important for us to do so we can connect with God and have a clear channel, you know, being able to receive all that God would have us to receive as we study the word uh, after prayer. Uh, we will do, or at least engage in part one. Now you can see what part one is by looking in the description of the stream. So it says part one is Romans chapter 15, 
verses 1 through 13. So we're going to read those verses and we're going to break it down. We're going to seek to gain understanding on how to apply uh, the concepts to our lives. What are the concepts and how to apply them? Okay. Um, after we review this body of scripture here, uh, then we're going to transition. We're going to review uh, what we spoke about yesterday, which was a need for revival. And then we're going to transition into the next part of that, which is talking about the hindrances to revival. What hinders revival from occurring? And so we will delve into that particular area. And then we'll summarize all that we have gone over for this morning, and then we're going to be dismissed. Okay. Good morning, Brother Wendell. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray so we can get started. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This truly is a beautiful day. This is the day that you have made, God. And we will continue, continue to rejoice and be glad. God, you, you saw fit for us to be here. There's yet work for us to do, even on today. There are still, you know, lives that we can impact on today. There's still things that you would need for us to do on today, God. And we say thank you for allowing us to be a part of it. Your plan. Thank you, Lord. And so, God, we recognize you as King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the great I am. You are the, the physician, our physician. You are, Father, the, the, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the maker of the heavens and the earth. And we, we're just grateful for this opportunity, this moment. And so we are asking that you would forgive us of all sin. Cleanse our hearts and our minds, Father, of all unrighteousness. Guide us by your spirit, even during this session. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth, to be able to pull out these concepts, Father, and, and apply them, seek to apply them, find out how to apply them to our lives. And so, God, thank you so much for technology and, and all that we have available to us to, to do this. And we just pray that you would get the glory out of everything. And so, Father, we love you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen and amen. Once again, welcome aboard, guys. We're starting at Romans 15 uh, for part one of our study today. Romans 15, starting at verse number one. Okay. And it reads as follows. We, we then who are strong, ought to bear with the scruples of the weak. And not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his, for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now many, now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive one another, just as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. Now, I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made to the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. For this reason, I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you people. And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, 
and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. All right, everybody, let us look a bit further. Let's look into this. What is Paul saying, right? This is what we really want to know. What is Paul sharing in these verses right here? Okay, what is he sharing? We're going to, we started at verse one. Okay, we started at verse one. He says, we then, he continued from the previous chapter, by the way, just talking about how, you know, the kingdom of God is not about, you know, what we eat and what we're drinking. You know, it's about righteousness. It's about peace. It's about joy. Okay, it's about obedient living. It's about, you know, you know, being able to, that, that character, okay, the character produced by way of the Holy Spirit, you know, it, it's about the fruit of the Spirit. It's about caring for your brother and not to, you know, do certain things to cause offense. And so these are some of the things that uh, was spoken about in the previous chapter. And so we get here, he says, look, we then who are strong, we ought to bear with the scruples or the doubts or the fears of the weak. Okay, of the weak. That's what, that's what we should really look at. That's what he's saying. We should bear, right? Strong, we who are strong ought to bear with the scruples, bear, to pick up, to carry a weight. Okay, that's what it's really trying to say. Okay, so the strong are not to simply just tolerate the weaknesses of the of weaker brothers or sisters. We are to help those who are weaker to shoulder their burdens by showing love, okay, and just consideration for them. That's what we really should be doing. Look at verse 2. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good. Right. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. Right. Meaning to build up, to strengthen. Right. This is what that means. We want to strengthen them. We want to help to have them built up. Look at verse 3. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Okay. He actually quoted um, Psalm. 69. Okay. He quoted from that particular Psalm. So in other words, he didn't come to please himself. His ultimate purpose, Christ's ultimate purpose was to please God and to accomplish the will of the father. Okay. And so that's what, that was his purpose. And that's what our purpose should be too, to please God, to accomplish his will. Look at verse four. For whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope, right? Might have hope. You see, now, although we as believers, we live under the new covenant, we're not under the authority of the old covenant, but God's moral law has not changed. And all scripture is of spiritual benefit. It is. So Paul's description of the benefits of scripture, it definitely includes, it includes the New Testament, but it speaks primarily about the sacred writings, or I should say the Old Testament. Okay, that's what it speaks of. All right, look at verse five. Now, it says, now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another. He's urging you know, those, both those who are strong and those who are a bit weaker, despite these differing views on these non-essential issues, like what we're drinking and eating, what they were observing, all that, he's encouraging us to pursue love, you know, spiritual harmony in regards to matters on which the Bible isn't really like, you know, dead on with, okay? Look at, look at, look at verse six. It says that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, our unity should be both real, like of one mind, and apparent, one mouth. See, but the, but the consummate purpose, right? The consummate purpose of unity is not to please other believers, but it's really to glorify God. That's what it's all about. Okay, that is what it's all about. That's what it's always been about. Okay, 
It's always been about that. Look at verse 7. He says, therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Okay, receive one another. See, if, if the perfect and sinless son of God was willing to bring sinners into, into his family, into God's family, how much more should we really forgive, you know, other believers, you know, or should I, should, I should say it this way, how much more should forgiven believers, right, be willing to embrace and accept one another in spite, okay, in spite of other disagreements over issues of conscience, okay, because what one feels is right, you know, as far as what day you should observe, you know, a Sabbath or whatnot, it, that shouldn't be the focus. The focus is upon w- loving one another. That's it. And, and and living to please God. That is really, truly the ultimate purpose. That's what we're, our focus should be upon. Look at verse 8. He says, now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. Okay, Jesus was born, he was born a Jew, okay, and as a child, he was circumcised and identified physically, you know, with the sign of the covenant, okay? And when it mentions, you know, promises made to the father, we're just making reference to the covenant with Abraham that God reiterated uh, to both Isaac and Jacob during that time, okay? Now, these next couple of verses, verses 9 through the rest, you want to say the rest of this particular section that we read, um, it's, you know, what happens is to show, you know, what Paul did to show that God's plan has always been, you know, to bring Jew and Gentiles alike into his kingdom and to really soften this, this whole prejudice of, of Christian Jews against the Gentile brothers. What, what Paul does here, Paul actually quotes from the law, from the Old Testament, you know, to be inclusive of the prophets and, you know, twice even from the Psalms. That's what he's doing here, you know. And what he's doing is he's proving God's plan from their own scriptures, okay? He's proving God's plan. And you can look at verse 9, for example, it says, in that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written, okay, as it is written. And so, of course, he begins to quote uh, from Second Samuel, as well as from Psalm 18, okay? So what he's doing is this psalmist sings praise to God among the nations. You know, he's alluding to Gentile salvation. Okay, this is actually alluding to, this is kind of giving you an idea of, about Gentile salvation. Okay, look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. It says, again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. In other words, the coming together, Jew and Gentile. Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And of course, again in verse 11, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you people. You see how it's really hinting at and giving even the people who have the law, giving them an idea of what is to happen, right? So those who have the law, it was pointing in the direction of the coming together of both Jew and Gentile but also, most importantly, alluding to the coming of Christ. That's what the Old Testament and the law essentially was doing, pointing in the direction towards Christ, the coming of the Messiah. Okay? Now, I do want to point point you to and look at verse 13, which is the final verse that we read on this morning. It says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. We have to understand, you know, the God of hope. God is the source of eternal hope, of life, of salvation. He is, he is the object of hope for every one of us, every believer, every believer. And I love the part of the verse where it says uh, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power. See, the believer's hope, our hope, comes through the scripture. It comes through the scripture, which was written and is really applied to every one of us, to every believing heart, by the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
So our hope comes from the words, come, it comes as a result of the word of God. You know, it was written and applied for every believing heart by way of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to truly understand this. You know, the words that's written, that's put together in this book. And that's why when I, I always share that when someone who is not a believer gets a hold of the Bible, it may seem like foolishness to them. They may look at the word and they're just like, mm, eh, you know, it may not make sense, right? But once you have a relationship with the Father, you have the Holy Spirit within, he begins to give you understanding. He begins to make the word plain for you. So you're like, okay, yeah, so this makes sense. The reason why it says this, this here at this particular point and in this at this particular point, it begins to make sense. It's like the pieces come together, right? And so what did we go over today? What are your thoughts about what we went over? The first couple verses we focused in on bearing each other's burdens. That was the obvious truth regarding these first couple verses. You know, edifying one another, you know, being of like mind, glorifying God together. Like it was all about bearing each other's burdens. And then also the second part, really focusing in on glorifying God together. Jew and Gentile alike coming together and bringing glory to the Father. Okay. And so that's what it, that's what these verses are all about. We're going to definitely continue in chapter 15 on tomorrow morning. Uh, but I do want to transition. I do want to transition. And yeah, continue to share your thoughts below. I definitely want to hear your thoughts or at least read them. I know I can't hear them per se, but I would love to read them after the live stream is over. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, I know yesterday we spoke about the need for revival. So I just want to touch on a couple of things before we speak about its hinder hindrances regarding it. Okay. Now, one of the things when it comes to revival, uh, the ignition to it, the ignition, you know, what ignites and actually gets revival going is prayer. Prayer has been, has ignited every revival fire in history. Okay, prayer. Okay, so that's essential. Prayer is essential. Whenever revival needs to occur, prayer needs to definitely be at the forefront. Okay. Now, some people find it hard to pray. Now, why is that? Why is that? Because our, fl our flesh resists tra travailing prayer. You know, we're too busy, we give other things higher priority, you know, we're undisciplined when it comes to things like this, and it ha we have to be intentional. We have to be intentional, set aside that time to pray, okay? We have to do that, okay? Now, what are, what are some things that's being done right now by believers to promote revival? Now, many are praying revival but not necessarily sharing their faith okay not necessarily sharing their faith they are you know some are substituting prayer for a move of God for obedience to the word of God so you have to understand you have to not only pray but you want to be able to share your faith at the same time okay very important now what is true prayer I know we spoke about true prayer too True prayer is a travail. It's a travail of the soul, a groaning empathy. You know, and I can recall this. This is one of the first things that God uh, taught me. I remember, um, and I might have shared this before, when I was going through some health, it was just some health concerns at that moment. Uh, it, God, he really used that. It was a lesson in that. And, and that was when he began to teach me about prayer and about uh, travailing. That's what it was, because I began calling out, and it just for, for Africa, I have no idea, as if revival and change uh, needed to manifest there. And I believe, of course, it definitely does. Okay, uh, but this was many, many years ago. You know, when this, when he began to, when God began to share with me and teach me the importance of praying, and the importance of praying the scripture too. You know, a lot of times, you know, when you pray the scripture, it's you're you're standing on truth. You know, God's word. And remember the scripture says his word shall not return void. So what is it going to happen? What's going to happen when you speak the word 
it's going to accomplish that which it was called to accomplish. It's going to do that which it was sent to accomplish. It's not going to return empty. Okay? There's not going to be a, a, a lack of harvest. It may, of course, require a little time. You can't control the timing of the result, right? But there will be. There will be. So, again, true prayer is a travail of the soul. It's a groaning empathy, okay? But then it tells the, it tells that which is dead to come forth, to come forth. It's, it, there's power, okay, in true prayer. All right, what I do want to take a moment, let's talk about some of the hindrances, okay? Because while it may appear controversial to some to say that sin on our part can hinder a revival, you know, it's, it is both a biblical and, and a historical fact that when God's people, okay, sanctified themselves, it preceded a move, you know, a move of God's spirit. That's what happened. Okay, sanctify when we sanctified ourselves. So therefore, if we are serious about reaching this this world with the message of salvation, it is wise to search our hearts, you know, under the spotlight of a tender conscience to see if, if we're harboring any type of secret sin. Okay, any type of secret sin. You see, it's it's a common experience to find souls you know, kneeling at the altar, of course, may, may not be as much right now because of all that's going on. But you might see those kneeling at the altar calling upon God, you know, with, with great anguish of heart to fail to receive anything. And it is it's just as common, though, for groups of people to gather together for nights of prayer, and it definitely was in the past, you know, for a revival, and yet have, yet never have their prayers answered. So, so what is the trouble? What is the trouble? Now, of course, the word of God can answer that. You know, the word says your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face far from you that he will not hear you. Let me say that one more time. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear hear you. This is from Isaiah 59 and 2. Isaiah 59 and 2. So let, let us uncover our sin first of all, okay? Let us make straight the crooked ways. Let us gather out the stones and then, you know, and only then we may ask in faith and expectancy for showers of blessings, okay? Let us take our sins one by one, and deal with each transgression separately. And let us ask ourselves the following questions, okay? I'm going to give you a couple questions. Now, it may be we are guilty and God will speak will speak to us. Okay? So here are a couple of questions to consider. Right? Number 1. Have we forgiven everyone? Have we forgiven everyone? Is there any malice, any spite, any hatred or enmity in our hearts? Do we che do we tr cherish grudges, you know, or are, have we refused to be reconciled? Have you refused to be reconciled? How about this? You know, here's another question: Do we get angry? Are there any are there any uprisings within, or you know, is it true that we we still, you know, lose our tempers? Does wrath hold us at times in its grip? Okay. Is there any feeling of jealousy? You know, when another is, is preferred before us, does it make us envious and uncomfortable? Think about that. Do we get jealous of those who can pray and speak and do things better than we can? You know, do we get impatient and irritated? Do little things vex and annoy? Or are we sweet, calm, and unruffled, you know, under all circumstances? Are we offended easily, you know, when people fail to notice us and pass 
pass by without speaking, does it hurt? If others are made much, much of, and we are neglected, how do we feel about it? You know, is there any pride in our hearts? Or are we puffed up? Do, you know, do we think a great deal of our own position and attainments? Have we been dishonest? You know, is our business open and, and above reproach? Do we give a, a yard for a yard and a pound for a pound? Are we honest in our statements or, or do we exaggerate and convey false impressions? Here's another one, question to ask yourself. Have we been gossiping about people? Do we slander the character of others? And are we tail bearers and busybodies? Do we criticize unlovingly, harshly, severely? Are we always finding fault and, and, and really looking for the flaws in others? Do we rob God? Have we stolen time that belongs to him? You know, ha has, our, has our, our, our money been withheld? Hmm. Are, are we guilty of the sin of unbelief? You know, in spite of all he has done for us, do we, do we still refuse to believe the promises of his word? Now, I have a whole lot more questions, okay? But here's the one that I will, I will stop with. Have we failed to confess Christ openly? Are we ashamed of Jesus? You know, do we keep our mouths closed when we are surrounded by worldly people? Are we witnessing on a daily basis? Something to think about. Something to think about. These are, it, it, these are real questions. And these are some things that can possibly hinder revival or your prayers from being heard. So we really have to make sure that these things are not in our hearts. You know, if, if you struggle, for example, to celebrate others, you see others who are succeeding in certain things, but you're not celebrating them. But you kind of you feel like these weird feelings going on inside. That's something that could, that's something you want to check. You know, you want to bring that before God and check. OK, these are just, you know, little things. You got to pay attention to the body's reaction. Or I should say the flesh's reaction. And that will definitely let you know. OK. But here is one thing I'm going to tell you when it comes to all that I've shared and hindrances uh, to revival. The one thing that rings loud and clear. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. There's a lot going on, you know, in these different countries around the world. Until a people humbles themselves, seeks the face of God, seeks the forgiveness of God, these things, we can only expect these things to happen. But, but we have to do more praying. Um, only our, our part. You know, you can't force the hand of others, but you can do your part. Okay, and that is praying and, and ensuring that you're being a light in this world. Okay? And that you're sharing your faith as God gives you the opportunity. That you're sharing your faith boldly. Not being ashamed at all. Okay? Not being ashamed at all as to what God is doing in you. And being motivated to share words of encouragement by way of the word of God. So don't be ashamed as you go forward. You know, be bold and of good courage. Okay, be bold and of good courage. God may give you a word. He may give you um, something to share, whether it be on social media or, of course, um, in any other situation or circumstance. You never know. 
but you your channel has to be clear between you and God and you can clear that channel by making sure that there's nothing blocking it, no sin that may be um, hindering that connection. Okay. So listen up, I'm going to share um, a link, of course, to the support group. If you're not in there, let me know, or not, e not even that. If you're not in the group, I just posted the link, right? I posted the link in the description area, or at least in the comments of the stream as well. So you can just click on the link and request to be in that area. I'm going to do more updating on today to the group, okay, just to make sure that we're going to getting caught up with the links, the replay links. Um, the other thing, too, is if you feel that there are some topics, like you're like, man, Lakeisha, we really need to talk about this um, as far as different topics of focus, especially things that's going on today. If you think that there are topics we need to kind of break down and see what the Word of God has to say about it, go ahead and type it in. Okay, type your thoughts in. I definitely want to have some discussion, some real discussion. I think a lot of times we get so, um, how should I say it? We don't, we, we don't talk about real matters. We don't talk about real matters as it pertains to, you know, life and, and the things that's going on now. And we have to, we have to make the word practical. We have to, you know, this is, this is, you know, the, the Bible, the scripture is supposed to be a guide for us, you know, as we're traveling this journey of life. And so we want to make sure we let people know that this is a source, the main source that we really should be going to. The word of God is a source. It's that, 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 that roadmap, right? That guide, our manual while we're here on earth. It's the main manual, <laughs> okay? And so again, I just want to say thank you for those of you who have been plugging in and sharing some valuable uh, information, even your opinions, your thoughts. Like Brother Wendell, you know, definitely being here. And I see you, uh, Pamela Dixon. Thank you so much for being here as well. And Miss um, Pat and each and every one of you guys, you know, even uh, Dr. Sergio Rosell was here, okay? Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is some good stuff. All right. But keep in mind, everyone, uh, the virtual Bible study, we seek to do this every single morning except Sundays around 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're doing this for the purposes of helping you to win from the inside out. We're working on those matters of the heart. We're working on matters of the mind. That's what it's all about. Okay, my first priority me personally, and we got to focus on priorities too, by the way. My first priority is, you know, making sure I get my dose. What's my dose? The word of God. Got to get my dose in. Okay. Hey, brother Danny, got to get my dose in. I have to get this word of this word in and being able to share the word of God. That's like, man, that's like paramount. That's paramount for me. Uh, simply because I know that there may be some situations where part of the word is being taught, right? Part of the, they're not, you know, you got to get back to the heart, the root of the gospel. I know I can talk on this topic for days, but getting back to, you know, and that's why it really led me to really going into having a second part of the study, not just going through the New Testament, but helping people to understand about the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God really entails. All right. Uh, what our role is, how we lost you know, authority and dominion. What happened? Right? And that's the you know the reason why we have all of these different um religions. Okay, the reason why all these different things come up, you know, primarily being is because man lost dominion. And so they went out trying to find it, right? And in their search for trying to find it, you know, and of course amongst other things like hurt, um lack either control or or Lack of understanding, what happens is a person goes off and start tries to start their own path, you know, but it all takes root in the word of God, okay? You go and you try to take it and run with it, and you end up creating something totally different. And that's why the Bible, ultimately God, right, since he inspired the scriptures, he tells us not to add anything to it, not to take anything away. But unfortunately, when you do that, you end up creating a whole nother religion. And that's the reason why. This is why the Bible is a, the, the, still the best, most best-selling book. Because this is the root. 
This is the this is the foundation. And so what happens when you take something away, you get partial truth. Not the whole truth. So when something is not the whole truth, it's not true. It's not. Okay. And we say it in the most loving way, and we are to love others. Right? Just like God does, you know, being an imitator of God or an imitator of Christ, we love people. We don't love sin. We, and just like God doesn't love sin, we shouldn't either, right? Uh, or, you know, we definitely want to stand based on truth. When people ask questions about, you know, what do you believe is the way? What is the truth? The truth is the word of God. That's it. You know, there, there really is no debate. Um, yeah. Okay, but you got to stand, you got to be firm, you got to be confident. Um, and one of the other reasons, too, that we have this, we started going into talking about Buddhism and Hinduism and, uh, the, uh, and, and of course, Islam and all these different groups is to help you understand how to understand where people are coming from. Gain an understanding first, and then you'll be able to share with them and be that light and let them know, hey, you know, the way you, you're trying to find the way, but the way has always been present. The way has never been lost. Just like you know, you hear a lot of people say, "I gotta go find, find God." You know, I didn't find God. So the thing is, God has never been lost. You can't find somebody that hasn't been lost. The problem is, is that you know most people have yet to humble themselves and realize, look, I can't. I can't establish it. I can't do anything on my own. I can't earn it on my own. Why don't you fully surrender and say, you know what? I need God. Like I need, I need Christ in my life. He opens up the whole word, <laughs> you know, and he comes in and makes that, that, that home in you. Okay. He dwells in you. And, and that's what was the case for me many years ago. Many years ago, I was out there just Engaging in religion, you know, choir rehearsal, this, doing this, doing that, because I just thought that it was something I was supposed to do. And many of you can probably relate to that. But it wasn't until you have a relationship, relationship, right? When you start talking to him, you, you're concerned and you care about what he thinks. You know, you care about pleasing him. You care about whether he's, this is something that will bring glory. It's, I'm telling you, it's a whole different dynamic then and your eyes become open to the truth i'm telling you it's nothing nothing like it it's nothing mythical about it too i think a lot of times you you make things a little spooky <laughs> and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be okay but yeah best thing that has ever happened to me and i'm sure you all can contest to that as well as far as your relationship with the most high changed my life and I'm sure he has changed yours. Okay? I'm sure. So again, I appreciate you guys. You know I can talk about God forever <laughs> in my relationship with God. So, you know, definitely, you know, share your thoughts below. You know, we love to hear from you. Any topics that you want, uh, that we want to have a discussion on, a study about, we can do that. Also note, starting August 1st. Wow, that's like in two days, right? Let's see. Three days? The 30th, the 31st, mm -hmm. August 1st, let me make sure I have my calendar out, let's see. Yeah, so that's going to be Saturday. Yeah, so starting Saturday, we're going to start doing the Bible study using the Zoom platform, the Zoom platform. What that will do is um, it will give us many options, we know, right? So that if any of you want to say something, you know, and it's going to stream onto the timeline. I don't want you to think we're going to be moving completely off, you know, off of Facebook. But no, our goal is to still stream it onto Facebook. Um, you know, we know sometimes technology has its issues, but we want to stream it onto Facebook. And we want to allow the opportunity for you to share your thoughts verbally, if you like. It's not something you have to do. Okay. All right. So again, thank you so much, guys. What we're going to do right now. Uh, is we're going to pray so that we can be dismissed. So let us pray. So Father God in heaven, Lord, thank you so very much for this day. Thank you for this time that you've given us to gather together, to come to learn about 
more about who you are, Father, and your purpose, your ultimate plan. And so, Father, even as we learn today, even more so about, you know, seeking to please you and glorifying you and 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 how, of course, your ultimate purpose from the very beginning was to bring Jews and Gentiles together, glorifying you together as one. God, we're grateful that you've included us to be a part of your plan. And we just pray that you would help us to pray even more, you know, help us to get into the habit of praying more. And we just pray that when we don't know what to pray, that you would give us the words that we ought to say, Father. Even if that means groanings and, you know, and moanings and calling out and crying out, Father, God, you move upon our hearts and you fill us with whatever it is that you would have us to share as we interact with you. And so, God, if we realize it's not about us, but it's always been about you. It's always been about your plan. We thank you for choosing us. We thank you for allowing us to have the gift of faith to believe. And we just pray that we would continue to decrease and get ourselves out of the way, that you would rise and increase and that people would see more of you and less of us. We realize it's not about us. And we just we just pray that more and more souls, Father, would be saved. We pray that the yoke of your people, the burdens of the people be removed by your power. And so, God, we thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate you guys. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Uh, with the virtual Bible study. It's truly been an honor to be here with each and every one of you. And so remember, as always, you already know, I love each and every one of you. And God loves you all the more. Be blessed and have a great Wednesday.